Welcome all to this class of CS302 data structures. I am Dr. Sangeeta Vattacharya, Assistant Professor in Guru Nanak Institute of Technology, Delhi. And today I am going to introduce the subject, a very important subject of computer science, data structures to all my dear students. Data structures is not only important for computer science students, but it is also as important for all the circuit managers. In the first year, we have learned how to do the programming. And we have used the programming language C for it. Now, given a problem, we have seen that there are multiple ways in which we can program that. Today, we will be learning, and not today, throughout this course of this subject, we will be learning how we can use the concept of data structures to efficiently write the program both in terms of time and memory space. So, so now, I am going to my next slide and in my next slide I am going to introduce first the syllabus of data structures. So we have seen that I that prerequisite for this subject will be two things mainly the programming knowledge about a programming language and a background in mathematical concepts of probability set theory. In total, there are four modules and the textbooks and the reference books are given in the syllabus so that you can refer to any of the textbook and the reference book. We should remember that data structures uh, subject is, uh, if you want, you can learn it from one book or you, there are multiple books from which uh, you can learn. So the references in the textbooks will be helpful to you in doing so. So today we will be going for the module one and in the module one we know the concepts of data structures will be there and in that particularly what is data and data structure, what is abstract data type, algorithms and programs and the basic idea of pseudocode is there in module one. We will be going through each of these topics slowly. So first, what is data and information? What is data? Data is some raw, unorganized facts. Means, suppose you have appeared for a mathematics examination and each student of a class will be having some marks in it. Someone may get a zero, someone may get 85, someone may get 60 and so on. So there are multiple number of marks of each of the student in that class. Now, if that is the fact, then so someone may get a zero, someone may get 85, someone may get 60, and dot, dot, now, what does this mean to the teacher? So a person, a student who is getting a zero marks is of no meaning to the students because that student may score 80 in the next exam. Maybe he was unprepared for the exam. Someone who is getting an 85 may be a good student, but from this individual marks, it is not possible for the faculty to make out what is the overall performance of the class. So this individual marks of the student can be termed as data. So they are raw unorganized facts. When we come to information, information is when this raw or unorganized data is processed into some organized structure data it becomes an information and we should remember that always 
process data have to be presented in a some context so suppose this marks 08516 when we try to find out the average marks of that subject mathematics for a given class then we it is presented in this context to measure the performance of a given class so that is a context and then that becomes an input. and information is always useful in nature so the data which is available from that data we are applying some kind of concept some kind of operations to come out to information which is going to be useful so this is the difference between data and information now we move to the next slide now let us see this so what is a data structure now we know what is a data now what is a data structure so suppose i write a small program here let me write a small program here so main and i want to find out the sum of three numbers so i am writing int in one in n2 n3 then scan it so i'm basically omitting the basic parts i'm just writing the concept here i'm person in one i'm person in two i'm person in three and then what i am doing i am writing n equals to sum equals to n1 plus n2 plus n3 and then i am simply printing the value of if we look at this program we can see one thing very clearly that because the because this program is because this program we are trying to find out the sum of three numbers what is happening is that it is becoming easy we can take three variables of integer type n1 n2 and n3 we can take that values from the user and then we can find out the sum of the three numbers and we can print it now suppose we instead of three numbers if we want to find out the sum of n numbers we know the data the variable type which we will be using for that will be typically an array an array of type n why should we do that because we know that if we have to take in in number of, if we have to find out the sum of in number of elements then it is not possible for us to take in variables because in variables will be stored in different memory locations individual variables are stored in different memory locations well if we take an array the array elements will be stored in contiguous memory location so it will be something like this so if we assume the memory space starts from something like 2000 so the next value will be 2001 2004 if we assume it is a 4 bits 4 bytes and so on so this is what data structure teaches us so given a problem how we can store that data in the memory so that we can efficiently program our problem so that is what mean by efficient now what is the main concern here first how the data will be stored so for example how the data will be stored so for example we see that so in this particular case 
here we can store the variables like in number of individual integer variables or we can store it in the form of an array like here so we can take something like a in where in is going to be defined by the user so we can take store the elements in number of elements in an array or we can take in number of variables given your experience of programming you can assume that given we instead of taking in number of variables it is always better to take the array of elements and apart from that the other concern will be what will be the logical operations which will be performed now when we talk about the logical operations we will be coming to it in great details in the later in of our uh, class but logical operations typically means the insertion for example insertion so you are having an array of in elements now you have to put data into this array so that is the operation called insert so you can call that as an insert so that is a logical operation there's nothing uh, now we are not talking about uh, uh, so this logical operations are typically implemented as functions we will be seeing that so what is it is that these are the logical operations these are not typical operations like arithmetic or relational which is already defined it is not defined what we are getting here is that these are operations which have been defined by the users so insertion means you have to insert data into the array deletion means you have to delete elements from an array we will be seeing that things in a later course of time so we will be looking at some of this logical operations now so data structure let us recapitulate so data structure is basically given a problem what type of information that what type uh, we can use how we can store the variables so that our program works efficiently and it consumes less memory space so we can tell it in that form now if we look at this data what are the type of data structures let us see what are the type of data structures so the type of data structures are primitive data structure and non primitive data structure what is primitive data structure now we have seen that in case of primitive data structure we have used variables of type int we have used variable we have used int type of variables we have used cat type of variables we have used float type of variables and so on so the other type of data structure which is available apart from the primitive data structure is the non primitive data structure so what is non primitive data structure non primitive data structure is basically defined with the help of the primitive data type and some operations so this two combinations make the non primitive data type like for example if i talk about a linked list so what is a linked list i will be coming to it so i will be coming to it what is a linked list the best example of it you can think of it as a train so the trains so this is a train these are the compartments of the train so at the last there is the engine and in the front there is also the engine so this is the engine of the train and these are the compartments see this structure so how is it so there is a head node so this is a head node this is known as a head node and head node and the other compartments are connected to the head node so this is the first node which is connected to the head node the second compartment is attached to the 
uh, first compartment and the last compartment is attached to the previous compartment so it's a it's a kind of structure linear structure if you can see in this structure the compartment c2 is behind c1 c1 is behind engine and so on so if you look at this this type of structure if we want to implement in the c language or in any kind of language this data structure is known as a linked list so it is known as a linked list now linked list if we want to implement this linked list then it can be implemented with the type of structure uh, type called structure which we have already studied in c how to define the structure and along with that some operations logical operations like insert so we can have something like insert operation so again i am telling these are all logical operations which are implemented as functions now when we talk about a non primitive data type non primitive data type are of again two types one is a linear and other is the non linear so what is a linear data structure now let us look at it as a array so we know if i define an array a of size 5 so i am defining an array a of size 5 when it will be stored in memory how it is going to be stored so this is going to be a 0 so this is a 0 this is a 1 so the indices are like this So I'm simply writing now two a two, a three, and a four. And if we look at the memory representation of this, so suppose the memory starts from two hundred, then this will be two hundred four, assuming that we have a sixty four bit compiler and the size of the uh, integer is um, four bytes. Then this will be two hundred eight. This will be two hundred twelve. And this will be two hundred sixty. Now you see, in this type of data structure array, what we are seeing is that the elements of the array are stored one after the other in sequential manner in a contiguous memory location. So this type of data structures are known as linear data structure, where the elements are stored in sequential order similarly if we look at this example of the train linked list can also be considered as a linear data structure now if we look at the non linear data structure now let me clear everything out now if we look at the non linear data structure think of the hierarchy in your family so first you are having your grandparents so these are your grandparents from the grandparents we are having our father and we are having our mother so this is mother from father and mother we are again having some kind of uh, we are having the children are having so it's a kind of hierarchical structure where there is a relationship of parent child so there is a parent child relationship in array now if we want to store this data structure visually if you see it, it we cannot store this in a sequential manner because it is having a kind of kind of hierarchical structure so this kind of data structure where the elements cannot be stored in sequential manner but has to be stored in some non sequential manner is known as a non linear data structure so just a recapitulation we are having uh, data structures are of two types one is the primitive data structure where the elements are basically of the basic data types like integer char float etc and the non primitive data type which with data structure which can be defined with the help of the primitive data type and 
some operations, some logical operations. And then if we come to the non-primitive data structure, again, there are two types. One is the linear, another is the non-linear. In case of linear data structure, the elements are stored in some sequential order. Well, if we talk about the non-linear data structure, the elements are having some kind of hierarchical relationship and cannot be stored in a sequential manner. Now, if we come to the basic operations which I was talking about, so there are these six kind of basic operations which can be defined and which are more common. One is the insert operation. So insert means we want to add some elements into the data structure. In that case, this is the standard notations. We will be studying about the specific data structures. Like if I talk about a stack, we know every one of us use a very simple, uh, every day we use this very simple data structure called stack. And what is the stack? Like, for example, you are keeping your books. So the first book goes at the first down. The second book goes on top of that. The third book goes on top of that. So this is book one. This is book two. This is book three. So if you are having some n number of books, so the nth book will go at the top. So you see this particular data structure we have been using every day in our daily life. And this data structure is known as a stack, where the first who comes in are put at is the last one to be out. So this book one has been kept at the first and so this will be the last one to be removed because we are going to remove it from the so see, if we want to insert, now how the book one has been added into this chat. So that is done via the insertion operation. So insert is a standard function. Now when you come to chat, this term of insert will differ. It will be named something else, but the basic operation remains the same, that is adding an element into the chat. Delete. What is meant by delete? So we have this chat, now we want to remove elements. So deletion basically means remove, removal. Removal of the elements from the data structure. So if we want to remove the init book, so what it will be done, it will be taken out. And what will be the function used for that? It is known as the delete function. So deletion will lead to the removal of elements from the data structure. Well, addition or insert will help in inserting the elements into the data structure. Now accessing an element of the access function. Now see, as I told, everything in this data structure is defined in terms of a function. They are all functions. Why they are functions? Because we have to... Now, what is accessing an element? So suppose we are having this stack of books b1, b2, b3, and bn, and suppose we want to access this particular element b3. So this is done via the operation or the logical operation, which will be implemented in terms of a function, which is known as Next is the traverse. So we know traversing means traversing means visiting each element of a data structure. So we are having this stack of n number of books and we are traversing from the n. Now remember, because in this case, we are having the first element to be the nth book. So the traversal will be in this direction, from top to bottom, top down. So basically, top down, we are going to traverse. So traversing means visiting each element of the data structure. Next comes sorting. So sorting kind of operations we have already seen. So we are given some haphazard number of elements. Like suppose we have been given first 100, and then 10, and then 80, and then 50. So this is the order of elements given. And what we have to do, we have to sort these elements either in ascending order. So either in ascending or descending. So that, that depends on the given problem, what we have to do. So this is ascending or descending one. So this is the sorting operation. So this is known as the sorting operation. So 
so that the elements have to be arranged in a particular ascending or descending order. And the last one, so here we are going to study a number of sorting algorithms. Um, so we will be coming to it as we go through it. The last one is the search. So what is search and what is the difference between access and search? See, in case of a search, you will be given an element X and you will be told to search that in the given data structure. Well, in case of accessing, no elements will be given. So this will not be given. And you have to maybe access an element based on a given index or based on something or simply randomly you have to access an element. So in case of search, you will be given an element X and you will be told to search that element in the given data structure, whether that element is present or whether the present element, if it is not present, we have to report that no, it is not present. So here we are going to study three uh, kind of searching algorithms, namely linear search, binary search, the most popular ones, and one more search, which is known as the interpolation, interpolation search. So these are the six logical operations. So when we talked about data structure, we told we will be concerned about two things. One, how the data will be stored. And the other is how to, uh, what will be the logical operations. So these are the logical operations which will be present here. Now we come to one more important concept of abstract data type. So what is abstract? Let us first understand each term. What is abstract? Now see, when we are talking about abstract, that means we are talking about, so this abstract means something which is hidden or something which is not specified correctly. Not correctly, but something which is not specified. And when we are talking in terms of a data structure or in case of programming computer science, we will be talking about the implementation. So we have a data structure and we don't know how it is the implement. So that is hidden. So that is called abstract. And what is meant by data type? Data type basically specifies the set of values which a variable can take. For example, if we are talking about E and Okay, let us check the example of CAD. So it will be easy to understand. So how many, what is the size of it? It is one byte. So one byte means how many bits? So it is basically eight bits. Now, you know that in case of eight bits, in case of unsigned CAD, so the range will be from zero. So this is for unsigned so this is in case of unsigned CAD. In case of unsigned CAD, it will be 2 to the power. So what will be the uh, range? So 2 to the power 7. So it will be 2 to the power 8 because 8 bits are there. So it will be 2 to the power 8 minus 1. And if we talk about signed CAD, so we know signed means the range will be from minus to plus. So it will be from minus 2 to the power 7 minus 1 to to the power 7. So this will be the range in case of unsigned care and signed care. So this is the set of values which are, if we if we define a variable to be of unsigned care, so this is the set of values which it can take. And if you are talking about an unsigned care, so this is the set of values which it can take. So this is known as a data type. Now then what is meant by a logical uh, abstract data type, ADT in short, so ADT will be some kind of logical description which will define, which from which will define the data type, but the implementation 
details will be hidden and only the concern will be the operation system. So abstract data type is a kind of logical description which concerns only about the operations that are allowed, but the implementation details will be of no concern and it will be hidden from the end user. What is the advantage of ADT? Let us think of the advantage of ADT. Suppose we want to maintain a student record. So we are maintaining a student record which will be having different fields like maybe roll number, a typical example uh, fields will be roll number, then name, and etc. Something and etc. Now you see roll number, name, etc. Now if we want to implement it in terms of array, so we are implementing it in terms of array, and then initially we started with some maybe 100 students, and as the length of the uh, number of students will be increasing day by day, so then this length also has to be increased. What is the problem with that? When we are doing some kind of programming, depending on the number of student records which is coming, if we have to change the number, the data structure, the inherent data structure, then the programmer have to do, it will be a constant job for the programmer to do. Instead of that, if we can hide the implementation details, if we are concerned only about what will be the operations performed on the student record and what kind of data, what kind of uh, functions we have to write to access any particular field from it, rather than thinking about the implementation details, it will be of much help to the end user or to the programmer. So how we can implement it? The student record can be implemented is no concern for the end user. We are concerned only about the type of operations that will be allowed on this structure. So this is the type ADT and ADT is very important dear students because ADT uh, often in exam it comes like what is ADT and gives an example of ADT. As we go through the course of this, uh, through the subsequent uh, chapters of these courses, we will be knowing one by one Whenever we take a topic, I will be explaining why that uh, topic is abstract data type. As we go on, just remember the details that it is, it is going to be only the operations which will be allowed. So now we come to algorithms. Algorithm definition we have already read in uh, C programming, just a, re a quick recapitulation and a little bit in details. What is algorithms? It is typically a sequence of steps which will be required to solve a given problem. So you have been given a problem. Let us assume the problem is something like this. So the problem is to, so the problem is to find whether a given number is whether a given number is or even so this is my given problem you see it's a very simple program which you have already done in uh, uh, your uh, c program so this is my given problem now what will be the steps you will be taking to solve this given problem let us think of it with a very practical example of making a tea. So we want to make a tea. What will be the first step in doing that tea? So first we have to take the kettle and then we have to take a cup. Then we have to boil, we have to switch on the gas. We have to put the kettle onto the uh, uh, stove. We have to put water into it. We have to boil it and then the subsequent steps come. So the first step is very important, that is to take the kettle. So now we come to the property. So this is a sequence of shapes which we will be following to, to make the tea. So the problem is to make the tea. And these are the steps which I told we will be taking. So let us go back, let us go to the next slide and let us uh, see. So 
what is the problem the problem is to make so what are the steps so steps one to take a kettle and cup next what will be the next step to pour water into the kettle by measuring water in the cup you see this this step it is important to take the cup also because that will be giving us the measurement of how much water we want to take to switch on the gas fourth step will be to boil water in the kettle the next step will be to put tea powder and sugar and milk if someone wants to have it switch Yes. Second step will be to pour tea into. So you see, these are the seven basic steps to make a tea. I don't know. Maybe your mother may be making it in a slightly different way, but these are the basic steps as far as I understand. Okay. Now, you see. So let us have this, and let us go back to the previous slide. So see, this is the steps. Now, these are the sequence of steps. So if I talk, I can tell that this is my algorithm to make a tea. Remember, algorithm is written in very simple language, in very simple English language, which is understandable for everyone. You write an algorithm. someone else sees it should be able to write a program out of that algorithm so algorithm comes first given a problem first we decide what is the data structure what will be the data structure requirement of that problem the second step will be to write the algorithm the third step will be to program so these are the three subsequent steps whenever you are trying to solve a given problem so i will come to it again let us go back to the previous slide and see what are the properties whenever we are talking about the property in the properties part we were having five things in case of algorithm the first one is the values from specified set so the input values from specified set now let me go back to this slide see to take a kettle and cup so if i think of it so this are the five so this is my input here so the first property of the algorithm is input so a set of values from the specified a set of values from the specified uh, set of values so this is my input an algorithm is incomplete without input so you have to have some input which will be defining that where you have to start the next property is the output see whenever we are doing some work it should have some definite defined output so if we are making a tea what is the purpose of making the tea the purpose is to pour the tea into the cup and serve it to people so that we can give it to people and they can have it 
so that's why this is the output so this is the second property which defines that it should be have some output from the specified set of inputs the third property which we are having in case of algorithms is definiteness what is definiteness definite means means the steps which we are writing should be very clear and precise so when someone looks why so that comes from the fact that whenever we are trying to write an algorithm that algorithm will be used by some other people to write a program and whoever is writing the program should be able to make out for the algorithm what it what it wants to do because the jobs are separate the programmer cannot go back and ask the algorithm maker that why you have written this and what is it because i want to program it the programmer need to understand from the written steps that what has to be done so that's why the step should be very clear and definite so this is the second property third property rather third is the finiteness now this is one more important property that means the algorithm should have a finite number of steps you can see that our algorithm of making a t is finite so there are in total seven steps this seven may become 10 this seven may become 50 but it should be finite it cannot go on on and on and on and at the last step there should be some thing to end the program so this is our end this is our end switch off the gas is our end and from this what is the output the output is to pour the tea into the cup so this is finite fine means finite means a finite number of steps should be there to end the algorithm and if we talk about the last one the last one is the effectiveness now how to measure this effectiveness effectiveness is basically whatever algorithm we are writing that should be effective in terms of the memory space and the time taken when i start talking about the data structure and why should we use data structure i told that data structure there are various type of data structures available but data structure learning the subject will teach us given a problem what should be the type of data structure we are going to choose so that our program memory space and time is optimized so it will be taking a minimum so there will be a balance between the time and the space and it will be an optimized one so that is what the algorithm teaches us that effectiveness means whatever we are writing that program should be running in a finite amount of time so that finite amount of time is the effective so i hope this is clear so we will just go back and check for the properties of the algorithm which i have defined uh, which i have defined so it should terminate so values from a specified set then solution value should be from a from the specified set of input values so our input for making the tea is kettle and cup output is pouring the tea into the cup so it is from the set of uh, input values precise in meaning that means it should be clear and precise not ambiguous the steps it should end after a finite number of steps and it should end in a finite amount of time and also it should perform correctly correctly means we should get whatever is our desired output we should reach at that point so that means correctness whatever we are giving as input to our program and whatever the problem is desired output is desired from our problem we should achieve that at the last it needs to be told that algorithm is written in plain english language and that has to be converted to the program that means it has to be implemented only when we implement an algorithm we can get so talking telling 
this and giving a very practical example, I will just move to a more uh, common example of to find whether a given number is or or even students. You please see this program nicely and in the next class when I will be coming back I will be defining to you that what is the difference between algorithm and pseudo. So if, if this is my problem then what will be the input? A given number n maybe. So the input will be a given number n. So given number n, okay, then what will be the output of this? So let me check output. So the output will be even or odd. So it will be a kind of printf statement. So print even or odd. Now I come to the algorithm. So what will be the steps? So the steps. The first step. The first step will be star. The first step of an algorithm is always a star. What will be the second step? So we start the algorithm. Then. N. Mod 2. Is equals to equals to 0. If n mod 2 is equals to equals to 0, third step will be print or we can also write display if we want display n is even. If n mod 2 is not equals to 0, then we can write display in is odd and the end will be so the program stop so we can write stop or we can write end we can write in so see students here as part of a normal concept of writing if else i have not used the statement else why that is will be very clear when i come to uh, explain the pseudo code in the next lecture there you will be seeing that what is the difference between algorithm and pseudocode? And with the same program, we will be seeing how to write the pseudocode for this program. But coming back to the algorithm, you see, in this, we are maintaining the input, we are maintaining the output. So it's a sequence number of sequence of steps, a finite number of steps. So it is finiteness is maintained. So the finiteness property is maintained. The, uh, the, the steps are clear and precise. So anybody who is seeing this program will be able to make it. So it is definite. So it is also definite. So it is also definite. And you see, if we run this program, it is going to take a finite amount of time because the primitive we are using a very uh, data structure which is used is a primitive data type. So n can be normally it will be going to be an integer type if we are writing this program in a language. So it will be primitive data type data structure what we are using. So it is going to give us a correct result by seeing at the algorithm itself. So. For this lecture, it will be till here. In the next lecture, we will be continuing with the algorithm part. Algorithm, what is, how to write more algorithms, how to measure the efficiency of that algorithm, the notions of complexity, and the difference between algorithm and C. Thank you very much. Hope you have liked the lecture. And in case of any problem, you can contact me.